Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this on your own. Today's project is going to be installing paver stones. Let me show you the project right now. This is our project area. We just got done uh, redoing this stucco. Uh, check out my channel, subscribe to my channel if you want to see that whole series on stucco repair where we basically removed all that old stucco, went down to the studs and rebuilt the entire wall out. Uh, but that project is completed. Now we're moving away from the house and we are focusing our attention on these paver stones. I installed these stones. Um, these are 12 by 12 gray tiles. Here, here's some just sitting right here because we're going to change this row from two to three. We're gonna add so we have 14 more tiles here. But we're gonna do a lot more than that. Now, here's the problem. See how all these tiles, all these pavers are just just out of level. They're all uh, weeds and stuff. They grow inside of them. And they're all squirrely. And I'll tell you why. That's because when I installed those, uh, I don't know, eight years ago, they, I didn't put any underlayment. There's nothing under there but dirt. I didn't even put landscape fabric under there. But on this particular job, we are going to go full bore out. Now, I already put up some survey lines here. As you can see, I've got my string. I've got some stakes in the ground, which is nothing more than a rebar. Because I'm happy with the way that the, the slope is away from the house and, a, and away from the house this way. The, so I did, I did the slope properly. The problem is, is the underlayment. But I want to maintain that same slope. So I've got my, my string lines on both sides of the, uh, the new route. The new route is going, uh, each paver is 12 inches by 12. So the new one, when we add a row, it's going to be 36 inches across. So from string to string line, it's 36 inches across, okay? And I've also got the, the string at a certain elevation to maintain exactly that same elevation when we go to rebuild our project. Now let me show you what the base is going to be on my project. Okay, so we've got seven bags of all-purpose uh, sand and I also have uh, paver edging which is this product right here which is uh, purchased this at the Home Depot. It's like seven dollars per six-foot section. There's the zoom in of that exact name, Proflex. I'll have links for all these products down below. But the most important thing is this, this mat right here. Um, this is going to be the underlayment. Instead of, this is a new technology. Rather than using the uh, gravel, a four to six, uh, four inch gravel base, it's using these mats. Now here's a zoom in of one of the mats. It tells you that it's called uh, Brock Paver Base and it gives you a pictorial of exactly what the um, what the process is with this whole project but we're gonna do this whole project together so you're gonna see it uh, firsthand but the bottom line is is that first you're gonna uh, get your soil going then you're going to put some landscape fabric down then you're gonna put some sand down then you're gonna put these paver panels down then you can go ahead and put the uh, pavers in last. Then after that, we're going to put some uh, polymetric sand. Now I did buy some polymetric sand called Permasand right there, but I got the wrong color. That color is tan and I need to get gray, so I will have to exchange that container for gray. But that's the last step of the project anyways. So what I did was, is I just drew out exactly what my project is going to be like you can see that the first thing we're going to start out with is soil, then the landscape fabric, then one half inch of sand, then three quarters of an inch is the, is the thickness of those paver panels. Then my pavers are 12 by 12 by one and a half inches thick. So that gives me an elevation. So my total elevation from the top of the paver to the soil is two and three quarters of an inch and then after I do that sand then it's going to be um, a two and one half inch so this way I can try to uh, come up with the correct elevation of my project now that we have our string lines established I can go ahead and remove these two rows here 
and plus this row right here so that it's un unobstructed the complete uh, distance where my where, where the three rows are going to be then I can get that that um, earth down to the correct depth so the first stage of this project is going to be me just removing these paver stones and getting this earth ready I'm going to do this in two stages I'm going to do this set this section here first get this all done in perfect then I'll re um, ch remove these string lines run new string lines for this section right here then uh, I'll do the same process pro procedure over here Now that we have removed all the pavers, I got all the pavers over here just stacked up real neatly out of the way. And um, I got my, my board, my screed board down there to show you what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. You see right where the string is, how it's uh, above the ears of that? I know that that level right there is supposed to be my soil level. So uh, I need to uh, remove some soil here and get everything kind of uh, tamped out so that I can uh, get everything to the correct depth that I'm looking for. So I'm, I'm just going to use these landscape tools, my, my square shovel right there, my rake, and there's my tamper because I need to get the soil level all consistent in this whole run and that is this is the method that I'm going to use to accomplish that goal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. You know, even though I drew out everything, I still uh, incorrectly cut this board. I cut it exactly six and one, three quarters of an inch, and it should be actually eight and three quarters of an inch. I didn't take into account the lip, so um, because I have a, a four inch gap from uh, from the string line to grade, and I know that I need to make up two and three quarters of an inch uh, between my paver, the paver panel, and the sand. So if you add everything up, it actually needs to be eight and three quarters. I guess this is a good time to say that mistakes will be made. I'm not a professional uh, paver installer. Uh, what I am is a DIYer. Uh, I want my outcome to be uh, like professional results, but am I going to make mistakes along the way? Yes, of course I'm going to make mistakes. Is this a big mistake? Not really. I just cut the board incorrectly. I'll cut another one. It's no big deal. But uh, I hope that something like this gives you, if you're a first timer on your paver project and you're watching this video because you're trying to learn how this process is done, you don't have to be perfect. You'll, you, you will probably make some mistakes along the way. Just have the mentality that says to yourself, you know, it's, it's just a mistake, it's no problem. I'll just cut another piece of wood, correct that mistake, move on. Which is exactly what I am going to do right now because this project will get done. Now we'll just use our jigsaw to cut the ears off of our uh, board. And uh, let's go to town. Okay, we're out here the uh, next morning. 
And it's first thing in the morning. We've got our screed board the correct height and you can see the distance between the uh, string line there. We need to take off about two inches of the run all the way down. So and we've got our landscape tools over here and we are just going to um, go ahead and get that uh, soil level to the correct depth. Let me explain where I'm at now on this stage. I've gone through the entire section that I'm that I'm working in and I've taken my screed board and I've just tested it about every 12 inches to make sure that the elevation is correct and this is all pretty pretty correct. I'm within one eighth of an inch uh, uh, going to the string line. Now what I'm doing is I am going with my hand tamper and I'm going to uh, tamp out and then double check again as I move along about every 12 inches or so with the board just to make sure that everything is good and then once that pass is done hopefully uh, I'll be ready for the next step. This particular step is the most backbreaking and non-glorious step but it's one of the most important because if you don't get your base right everything else isn't going to well for me my I, I'm very particular about my elevation so if you were doing just a slab out in the middle of nowhere it's no big deal but where I am trying to tie into exactly that pat uh, that sidewalk over there and then I have to make sure that it slopes down away from the house and and slopes a little bit pitched away from the house that way too so I've got two things going on um, so my elevation is very critical. Uh, so these these uh, string lines that I'm using for my elevation are just highly highly critical because everything that I'm doing is based off of these these string lines. So you really you know depending upon your project, you really got to figure out what your method is. Now this particular method I'm going to say is a little uh, poor. It's uh, it's not the greatest method, but. For me, I think it was the easiest one to do. A, a, a more sound method would have been if I could have put wood on both sides at the elevation uh, that that I'm trying to go for and then create some type of a screed board that I could have rested on those two things. Like you can't rest it on string. String is nothing. It just gives way. But if I had a piece of wood there at that exact elevation, but um, I didn't want to go through the trouble of building something to to do all that so I just went about it this way but I I guess I could have done that but I did not but that would be, it would have been an easier way to screed out um, the uh, different layers that you need but anyways that's where I'm at and that's I'm going to just go ahead and use my hand tamper there and just go ahead and tamp out and continue on basically that's the procedure I'm just going to continue at continue that process all the way down all right now that my project has been tamped let's just say about seven feet away from my starting point uh, now I'm throwing some levels down just to verify that my pitch is correct before I start hand tamping too much and I want to make sure that everything is still in line so I throw my four inch level up there and make sure that the bubble is towards that end of the level telling me that the slope is going down away from the property out towards the street which is the way we want it to go then I have a two foot level here and I throw that on top of the board when I when I go this way to verify them sloped this way out of the property as well so uh, away from the house as well um, so I'm checking both of those 
uh, levels as I move on. Now if I needed to go uh, and test or uh, measure longer than four feet I just take this uh, 2x4 which is about six feet long throw that on the ground then throw the 2x4 excuse me the, the uh, four foot level on top of that so then I can extend my four foot level range and measure out about six feet or as long as my 2x4 is as long as my 2x4 is fairly straight this one is fairly straight it's got a small bow to it but it's within an eighth of an inch uh, so it's re it's reasonable over a six foot distance. All right, there's a zoom in level on this bubble here. It's not much of a pitch, but it is is definitely pitching in the correct direction, and that is on the uh, four foot level right there. And if I take the four foot level and just come on the other side, let's just see what that. And then hold your level down. Make sure that the bubble is going in the correct direction, which is that way. Good. All right, so we know. I know that that's good now okay I've got my screed board up here now first thing I want to do is make sure I'm within an eighth of an inch of the string line that string lines a little high on that side but it's within an eighth of an inch and then coming over here on this side it's like just barely touching it right then we come over here we look at the bubble and we say you know you can see that the pitch is clearly away from the house which is exactly the way we want our our um, our patio or uh, sidewalk to be sloped pitching the water away now I can grade the earth on this side from the house to the patio uh, making sure that that uh, is higher than that elevation so that's not going to be an issue I just want to make sure that we're constantly always pitching water away from the house so as I'm moving along I found a couple of uh, irrigation pipes that are right there and so I just marked them off with a uh, landscape flag because I need to put spikes into this project and I don't want to put the spikes into the PVC irrigation lines so I also uh, traced it back on this side there you can just see the pipe well maybe you can see it through that right there so I just put a flag on both sides so this way I know to stay clear of anything in between those two flags so I won't put any spikes in that area the uh, project is uh, coming uh, along very nicely, uh, making good headway here with um, with the uh, soil. So I'm just uh, almost done with this uh, portion. I still have another four feet or so to go and get it perfect. I am happy to say that this portion of the project is completed. I am completely hand tamped this whole um, section that we're going to be working on the first section I've double checked my level across the entire um, uh, run but basically the bubble looks like that not a huge pitch but a pitch pitching away from the uh, property the the bubble going away from the house this way is a little bit more pronounced you can see that right there so we have uh, good pitch we have a good base we are completely hand tamped uh, we're ready for landscape fabric here's the materials that we'll need for this uh, plus I need to get a hammer I'll get a hammer out here but let's start with the landscape fabric uh, the agro uh, weed control film ideal for landscape landscaping three foot by fifty foot so our section that we're working on is exactly three feet because our paver stones are 12 by 12. It's a 36 inch segment. So we'll just basically start at this end and then work our way down. Um, and then in order to just hold the fabric in place until we get the sand on top, we'll get some staples here. So I got a package of that. And then to cut the fabric, I've got a pair of scissors and a, also a utility knife. I may need a hammer, I'm just going to get a hammer just to put the staples into the ground. But that's the products and let's go with, let's go to it. Well, I'd say that's the definition of easy. That was just a piece of cake to lay that out and put it in. So, nothing to that. 
just a few staples to hold it in place now we gotta move forward with the sand okay we're out here what I have is I have two strips of uh, wood that I cut on my table saw that I have a half inch dimension one there and one there and I got a, a bag of sand right there so basically and then this is the same screed board that I used to get the uh, soil level but basically now we're going to be using these two pieces of wood as the screed so we can just put the sand out and then screed it down so we're going to uh, go ahead and proceed with that right now I think you get the idea basically just putting the uh, screed wood down putting the sand out then using the screed board in order to to screed that out I, I'll be honest with you as I'm working with this I think a half of an inch is a little light I think three quarters of an inch may be a better uh, thickness uh, to uh, screed to it just feels a little light to me but um, but it, it, it's probably it's probably going to be fine. I might just be nitpicking whatever. I noticed I was a little light here with some um, sand, and that's probably because when I was doing my original screeding, I wasn't perfect. But there's a little bit of forgiveness. There's a little bit of forgiveness for the sand, with the panel um, uh, paver panels. So there's forgiveness on two fronts there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and continue on. All right, the sand base is 100% complete and screeded off and ready for the next step of the project, which is these, in my case, I'm using these uh, Brock paver bases. And the dimension that they give you for these is three feet by one point, what is it, six, seven inches, uh, one, one, one foot, 1.67 feet I think now sometimes when you read a dimension like that the dimension is different than the than the actual dimension now we know that we want three uh, stones uh, across our uh, our walkway here okay so we we know that we want that now measuring the let me show you they have a lip all right so the way that Brock made these they made them with a lip if you can see this there's a lip on, on one side here and on one side over here on the other side of this is the recess where that's going to slide into so if you take the measurement from the very top here over to here that gives you a dimension of exactly three feet and a quarter inch, 36 and a quarter inches. The dimension, let's see what that lip is. So the lip is exactly one half of an inch. Hold on, sorry. Let me get the camera in focus here. Okay, so you can see right there, the lip is exactly one half of an inch. Now, we need to, uh, so, so let's see here. If I take my pavers, and so if I cut this lip off on this side, and then do exactly three pavers tight guess what I'm one quarter of an inch over on this side as well which is the exact dimension of that of that uh, interlying lip so when I go to put the paver excuse me not the pavers the uh, the uh, the paver base when I go to put the paver base in because it's 36 inches going across this way I want to put them in like this Basically, what I'm going to need to be doing is I'm going to need to be cutting off that lip and that lip there and just using the tongue and groove on, on this side and this side, not on the ends. Except on this end over here because I am going to be uh, connecting on to 
to that. So I'll make sure that on this first one, I will uh, leave it uh, leave it on this side here because there, there will be an interlock um, connection there. So that's that's acceptable right there, but not um, not on the rest of the uh, project. So I've got my T-square here, and I got a piece of wood that's longer than 36 inches that I can uh, lay lay that out. Actually, it doesn't even have to be 36 inches because I'm just cutting it uh, this way here. Let me give you that exact dimension. Two. Let's see what the three of these stones are exactly. Three of these stones are not even 36 inches. They are 35 and three quarters of an inch. Okay. Uh, actually, 35 and three eighths of an inch. Yeah, 35 and three eighths if, to be exact. And the dis the uh, the let's see the thickness of not the thickness but the dimension. Let me just get the this dimension right here. So taking it without the lip right there over is exactly, what is that, oh boy, what is that, that is 20 and a, looks like it's 20 and one quarter of an inch. Okay, so I just need, because I'm just cutting off the 20 and a quarter of an inch, that's all I needed a piece of wood to be, but in this case it's a long piece of wood. Alright, so anyway, so that's how I'm going to approach this. The first piece I want to put down is the piece closest to me. Then I can walk out so I don't disturb my my sand that I've already I just got perfectly graded. I don't want to step on that. I want to put the mat down and then step on the mat. And then uh, I'll, I'll lay out the mats and before I anchor them in I'll check the grading to make sure the grading is good. Alright I cut off the first um, lip on just this side of the piece and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. I'm using this straight edge here to help me line it up. Let me give you a different angle. What I'm doing is I'm using this straight edge to line up here to make a straight edge this way because that's going to be the back half of this next section and I'm just going to straighten that out and I actually am going to tack it in with a couple of stakes so I brought out a couple of stakes that uh, are sold with the package. They feel like they're plasticky, but they're, they feel strong. But I'm going to uh, put it in so the mat doesn't walk on me, so I'm going to do that right now. I have the first three panels prepped and ready to go. I'm putting in four stakes per panel, but I want to see how my starting run uh, goes right now. I'll be honest with you, it looks like on the right hand side I'm tapering down a little bit. It looks like I'm a little low, but um, let me let me just um, try this out and get three, uh, three paver stones over there and see how uh, things start to line up. Okay, I was correct. I'm too far down, especially on the right-hand side. So what I need to do is pull up that um, paver panel or the first two paver panels and add some more uh, sand. You'll see that uh, the thickness of the pavers I'm using is right around the size of a 2x4. So what I'm going to do is once I pull up the panel, I'm going to use this uh, 2x6 and 2x4 that I got there uh, as a leveling agent to help me figure out exactly uh, the level that I need to be. Plus I have to take the, the panel into consideration too. But um, 
uh, I'm going to work on this right now. On that last one, I got sick and tired of uh, taking up the, uh, the black paver base and putting sand underneath, so I just put it directly under that one stone. So I'm going to try that technique just to try to move this project along. All right, I still have some cuts to do here, but I'm going to forego those cuts right now and try to do all my cutting at once. Um, but pretty much that's the, this section of the paddy, the uh, side, sidewalk project. And well, I've had overnight to think about it, and I do think that I should put in the, the edging. So I guess my this is my first time working with the this full whole system here. Uh, this is what I did last time was I just just simply put the pavers in and in, in dirt didn't even go through all this prep work so uh, I am uh, gonna cut my br get grass back right now and I'm gonna go ahead and install the edging All right, this isn't so bad. Basically, using the that is the straight edge, so it's it's not so bad to uh, just simply start off with the square shovel, get the get the right um, amount that you need there to come out, which is not much, and then take the grass, roll it back, and then get your depth right, and then and then plop it in place. So I'm just going to continue on with that same procedure through this run here and then continuing on on the other side all right so now I am putting the piece in right there and I have a choice on whether I want my uh, small section uh, to go either in this end of the project or what I can do is just slide down my section and put it in the middle Let's see if I can get you a better camera angle here the shading isn't being so friendly all right, so so what I'm going to do is is slide it down this way. So this way, I'll show you. Instead of me taking this and putting it to the next piece and then having a small piece here at the end, what I can do is I can take this piece, bring it over here, make sure everything's at the correct elevation that I want, 
It's like I just have to take down just a small amount right there. And then pretty much, okay, so right about like that. And now I'll just take my tape measure, measure out the distance and put my piece here in the center uh, rather than on the end. go and then one of the things you can do to help when you put this in is you can actually tap this to make sure that you get right at the correct depth that you want to go before you put your spikes in make sure that everything is just right all right so but basically this section here is ready for uh, ready for, ready for spikes to be put in I'm running out of spikes, so I just have this side uh, tacked in for now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and work on the other side and get that set up with some more uh, edging. I started trenching over here, and this is kind of a clay soil, so you got to use the pick with a pretty good amount of energy in order to dig through the compacted clay. And while uh, I was doing that, uh, I actually accidentally hit this wire right here and I didn't break it but I, I scratched it and so I gotta I have to check it that's the irrigation control wire for uh, let's show you this these irrigation valves way over here there's three valves so um, there must be six wires I'm assuming six uh, at least four wires if they do a common neutral um, inside this uh, bundle so one of the things that they you know don't tell you when you go to dig you never know exactly oh, where is that wire you never know exactly what it is that you're gonna run across so anyways that's one thing that happened to me so I'll, I'll have to be gentle around this uh, now and uh, do full testing and possibly do some type of a wiring configuration there to put it back into the soil. So what I did was, the first thing I did was, is I tested all of these valves to make sure that all of them work and they all do work. Then I inspected the wires really closely and I noticed that one of the wires was scratched on the insulation but not broken. So what I did was, is I took some sealant, Dana Flex Ultra by DAP, and I just completely saturated the line with that and I'm just going to leave that alone and let that set up for uh, a few hours before going into this area again that should waterproof the lines and then I'll be uh, aware of that I'll flag it with one of my uh, landscape flags and then I'll make sure that I'm real uh, delicate in that section and then I'll continue on with uh, putting down the um, uh, the edging on this side of the project I should also mention that uh, I also came across a sprinkler line very close to the top. I scratched the top of it. Didn't break it, but I did, you know, you can see it exposed right there. So uh, I'll be delicate in that section as well. Uh, you just have to be careful when you start digging. You never know what you're going to hit. But in my case, it's all irrigation related. Either sprinkler lines or control uh, wiring. It's all irrigation related. but it's always something to take into consideration okay so next day that uh, sealant is pretty much set up so that wire is back to normal protection I'm gonna go ahead and continue uh, this uh, trench here just to get it uh, these um, pieces uh, set in right here then I can start the excavation on this side and on this side for the um, paver edging and and that's where I'm at right now. I just wanted to show you how tough this stuff. This is this is the uh, paver mat, the Brock paver mat from the Home Depot that I purchased. And this is a strip that's left that that was cut uh, at the end of the run there. This stuff here, you cannot break it with your hands. I guess if you uh, you know fold it in half, it does it does uh, crack like that. So if you fold it too much, it can do that. So you can actually uh, break it that way. But uh, trying to compress it, like because the paver stones are sitting on top of this, this stuff is, is a really dense material. It doesn't really, when I try to squeeze it with my fingers here, it doesn't 
basically compress that much. So if you had a paver stone over, in my case, it's a one square foot area pushing down, the compression ratio is going to be very, very small. So it's uh, very durable stuff. This stuff is so tough that I almost get the impression that you could just put it on top and have this as your top. But I don't know how well the sun uh, will fade on this, and it's not designed this way anyways. It's designed to be doing it exactly the way that we are doing it. And As I reflect back upon this installation on this section, I think I did this process really poorly. And when I do this section over here, I'm going to do it completely different, and I think this method will be superior when we do this section over here. Because here, I'm going to start with the tracks. Here, I actually started with the pavers, section and now I'm moving to the tracks so um, you're gonna see a completely different procedure over here but let me explain um, one of the things that I'm coming across when I did put the um, the mat the paver mat down it over it was uh, overhanging the paver stone a little bit this way and as I go to put the track in the track was actually hitting that and it was sticking up slightly so I had to use my utility knife in order to cut it. So that's that's a, a little bit of an inconvenience at this stage of the game. Uh, so you have to, because I want my lip to be a l slightly recessed. I don't want it to be proud of the stone. I want it to be actually, I want the stone to be proud is what I'm, is the, is the, is the, is the um, what I'm looking for. And I want it in tight. Now, I did uh, set in one of the uh, spikes just as a temporary thing right here, and I put that spike in incorrectly, and there's a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to correct that right now, and you want to drive your spikes in at a slight angle like this to draw in the uh, edging so that it's tight. I want my edging to be tight. Even though I'm going to put the paver lock sand in there, I would still like the mechanical uh, bond of this uh, paver edging to keep the uh, the stones in as tight and compressed as possible. So I'm going to reset that spike. So it matters how your your dirt is on on the back. If you have it low when you go to hit it in it's going to create a, a, a bigger space uh, uh, for the edging going away so you have to watch all these little things when you uh, go to put your edging in okay so I'm working on this piece right now and you can see I'm going to have an inside corner here so once I line this piece up going this way with where I want it I'm using this as a straight edge because I know that basically this row is coming up and the new it's going to be set in the same place, but uh, but a little bit better than what it is right now. Then what I'm going to do is I'll use this as the um, the straight edge to cut it. So I just go 90, and then I go in slightly, just like a quarter of an inch. I put a, a black sharpie mark right there. So I take a black sharpie, put the mark right there, and then just cut in 40, uh, me, uh, pencil in 45 degrees. So basically, right there is my cut of where I want it to go. So I'll take this to my chop saw, cut it out 45 degrees, and I'll be good to set this one in place. Here's our 45 degree cut for an inside corner. Let's go ahead and see how well this fits out. All right, I want to anchor this piece in now so first of all I want to make sure that everything looks good I have the it's it's not overlapping it's just butted up against this piece back here and as far as my height elevation goes I, I, I want it to be exactly like this about that same elevation I want enough dirt in the back so when I hit this down it doesn't bow out that way so I want dirt in the back section here to make sure it's going up against me in this particular case. So I know I want to avoid a couple of areas here. This one here and this one here. But we should be fine right here. And 
about every 12 inches is where you put a spike. So we'll put the next one here just to give a decent area of uh, where we don't hit anything. Our wire is fine. We did not disturb our wire. I can go ahead and actually bend that down slightly, tuck it in like this, and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. All right, pretty much on this, all the edging is put in place. Um, what I can do now is I can start my excavation over here and get that ready to be excavated. Okay, so what we want to do is we, we just want to make sure that we're going down the slope, and we are going down. The pitch going that way is not going to be an issue. I just want to make sure that when we're going this way, that we're slightly proud on this side and the water is being pitched away from the house that way. Then I can control the soil level on that side of the project once we get to it to make sure that we're constantly shedding water away from the foundation. So that's the, that's the goal of this. So we'll, we won't deal with that soil level until after we get this established. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is just start over here. I got a torpedo level where I can uh, establish this height, then start here, and then work my way down to the transition over there. Get this side established, and then I can start in on this side over here. Okay, we've pretty much got this reasonably set up the first track, not, not nailed in, but the, the height elevation is just about where I want it to be. And now I want to put in this second piece but I need to cut that 45 degree angle. So all I do is just uh, line it up uh, reasonably well. Get my black sharpie here. And I make sure that I'm where I want to be this way. Okay, so right there, right there. All this looks good, right there. Now the cut line is here, but I want to be slightly shy, so I'm going to go to here, and I know that the 45 degree angle is going that way. Go to the, go to the chop saw, cut this out right now. All right, I've got the uh, piece cut out there, the 45 degree angle one, and um, I left it a little shy, about a quarter of an inch, uh, on purpose so I could have some expansion and contraction. And now I am just going to use these two pieces to try to uh, intercept this section over here and get this uh, completely established. Then I can tack that in and use that as my base, my basis for the next uh, segment. On this segment, I'm not going to use the string lines like I did on this segment over here. Instead, what I'm using is I want to get my tracks established 100% and use those as the screed points for my um, for the project so the elevation height of these um, paver edges is critical do you see how the stone when I give you a tight zoom in there the, the stone the stone has a slight beveled uh, edge to it on the four corners it's about a 1 8 inch bevel edge and I think that the height that you see right there of the paver edging is the exact height which is exactly one eighth of an inch below the top level surface of the paver stone. Now from a um, tiling project that I have I actually have these shims they're exactly one eighth of an inch and I've got a level there so if you put the level um, actually let me demonstrate it. So that okay so if you take the, the level and you put it uh, flush to the stone and you take your 1 8 inch shim, it's exactly 1 8 of an inch distance from the shim to the, to, to the level portion of the stone. So this one, I want to install this on this side 1 8 inch below the top of the stone. So I need to establish the height of this corner so I can intersect the two corners. So the way, to, the way I'm going to do that is use 
this stone here, which is the, the elevation I'm trying to tie into, use this with a 1 8 inch shim underneath and adjust the bottom of this um, paver edging to be at that exact elevation so it's exactly like that. Like So right now the camera may not pick it up but I'm slightly low. You can probably put two shims in here so I'm like an eighth of an inch too low. So I just have to take this out, add a little bit of dirt in here and bring this up to to an eighth of an inch. There's plenty of dirt here to do that with, okay? So get this at the correct elevation to where I want it to be. Put the, put the uh, level there and just get a starting point of exactly what I want and then get this whole row established 100%. So that's, this is my, the procedure that I'm doing to get this elevation just perfect because this is going to be my screed point when I go to when I go to screed the uh, the rest of the project. I have been uh, playing and manipulating the dirt for about 10 minutes. The track is uh, the paver edging is not set in with the nails yet, but it is exactly where I want it to be. When you take the uh, the level and you go on this side, it's it's exactly one eighth of an inch lower right there where I which is where I want it same thing on this end using this stone right there and then going over using that as the uh, basis and then tying the two together then taking my four foot level right there laying it down so the slope has got a nice clear pitch away from the house that way now I can't do this way yet because this one won't come into effect until we establish this line here. And of course we'll have a couple of constraints anyways. We'll have a tie-in point here and a tie-in point there, but we'll do our best to have it flat or pitched away. Now that this track is established, I'm going to start digging out in this section right here so I can uh, get this uh, track in place. Okay, just getting this thing excavated. I got a couple of sprinkler heads that I don't want to relocate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out those teeth right where the head is at. You can see I marked it with my black sharpie. I have a, a, a jigsaw. I'm just going to go to my table and uh, cut that with a, a jigsaw. So that way this track can uh, lay in there without being hit by the sprinklers. Here's the modified track. Taking into account those sprinklers, just notching it out. And All right, so I took out those two stones so that they didn't interfere with the level. And you'll notice that my bubble is just slightly proud on the house side, which is the correct side. But I, I can't go crazy here because I'm tying into the, the existing brickwork right there so it comes off flush. So that is now my starting point. I have a starting point up there. Good to go. Now I just need to... Uh, establish the rest of this to uh, to to get the correct elevation but so I establish my starting point and then I just move down the line to make sure that I've got the correct pitch and slope and everything like that
all of the paver edging is installed on this side so now we have both sides completed at the correct elevation pitch away from the house in both directions it's pretty much level this way but definitely pitching down that way okay we're back to our project I got my screed board all cut out you can see how much we need to uh, remove in order to get that soil level to the correct depth okay now that the pavers are removed I'm going to start screeding down to the depth of the uh, screed board using the uh, paver edges as my as my guide points okay so what I've done is take my screed board and I've done a very rough screed but right now it's screeding true now when I first we took the pavers off that first topsoil was pretty loose so I, I put that aside what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle that on here and give another screed down with that very fine um, so there's actually a mixture of dirt and sand in there is what that is so this way I can try to get a very a very true um, a very true screed but before actually before I do that I'll get my hand tamper right there and I'll give it a quick tamp and then I will uh, screed it one more time with the uh, fine stuff and then tamp it one more time again. Alright, that takes care of all the screeding, tamping, now I'm going to get the landscape fabric. Okay, now we're going to start screeding out our half inch layer of sand. Okay, so what I've got is a 1 8 inch spacer. I'm going to re-screed this, but this time I'm going to put a 1 8 inch spacer underneath that edge of the lip, creating a higher elevation here so there'll be more sand on this side of the project to give me that slight pitch that I'm looking for. All right, all the sand is screeded, all that portion is done. Now I got my panels. You can see they're not quite 24 inches, so I'm gonna to have to have a strip and I'll stagger my strips as I go. So I've got a uh, straight edge over here and a utility knife and a, a two by four to cut on. So I'm gonna start laying these out and get them cut and put, put them in.
I gotta change out my utility blade. This one's too dull. I'll be right back. All right, we've got, as you can see, the uh, rock paver base panels all in. I was just checking my elevation. It looks like I'm a little under. Well, it's like flushing out over there, and then it's kind of tapering down over here on this side a little bit. Um, and the same thing over here. It's kind of flush, perfectly flush over here, but as you get on this side of the panel, it's a little bit uh, or down. All right, it's the next morning. We're back to our project. It looks like uh, my sprinklers went off last night, so things are just a little wet right now. No big deal, but there's a little bit of moisture down there. Um, anyways, we're just going to start out here and just uh, get it going and, and uh, bring it down to there. Where I know we have to do some cuts at the end there, but that's the game plan. But this is the progress that I've made so far. I'm down to the uh, the last two stones in this row, and I got my uh, my tape measure over there and a speed square and a pencil, and I just marked those stones and I need to cut them. I'm gonna uh, if I had a wet table saw that would be perfect, but I don't have a wet table saw, so I'm gonna use my circular saw there. I've got a a blade on there that's meant for masonry. Fr During the job, this particular tile on the install got chipped right there. So I put this tile aside and now that I have a, a cut piece that I'm going to cut that end off. This is the section that I need. So if you chip a tile during the process, set it aside until you come to a portion of the project where you have to do some cuts and then just cut it out. I'm just going to pull off these sharp edges to make them like 45 since I know it fits good. <laughs> okay, so I got I got the two the two in. I beveled the edge right there. So that is just a little bit smoother than that hard uh, edge that I had there before. We got one more to go right there and it looks like this tile that I broke is big enough to use so I'm going to bring it over measure it and then cut it I just want to talk about uh, the blade that I used on that circular saw so first the one that I used was this one here which was from a um, uh, a bathroom uh, shower surround and this particular blade says that it's a, a wet cutting so I tried to use it obviously in a dry application and the results completely sucked uh, this blade was just sitting on top of everything. That's why I grabbed it. Uh, this one here I found buried in there, but this is what the blade pattern looks like. And this is this masonry dry cutting blade cut through that uh, brick like uh, like butter. So if, you know, once I switched over to the right blade, the job uh, went. Uh, the cutting portion of the project went like crystal smooth. All the pieces are cut. Everything is laid in there. Nice. It's all good. And what I might do is I might... I'm considering taking this edge here out and making it tighter up against this border and nailing it down. Uh, because I, 
I got a I got a reasonable gap there and it looks like I can get it a little bit tighter and, and it's not going to take much energy for me to just take that up and reposition all those stones and get this thing in nice and tight. There's a lip here preventing me from getting that tight edge. So I'm going to take my utility knife and cut that lip off so I can get this edge in nice and tight. All right, there you go. It's about as tight as I can get it. I didn't get it much better, but whatever. I tightened it up a little bit um, all the way around. The polymetric sand will fill that in and tighten that up when we get to that stage. Okay, uh, got to get the uh, get the grass and the edging back on over the uh, paver edging. So I'm over here and I'm doing quality control and I'm looking at my project and from this perspective, I thought everything looked pretty good. So then I came over here on this side of the project and let me see if you see what I see. And I've got the sun up against me, but you see that? I'm going to point it out to you in a second just in case you don't. And the camera's uh, trying to do the best it can with the sun coming on me. but. You see those those four flags? I know I have a lot of other flags for pipes and stuff. But that flag, that flag, that flag, and that flag. Inside here, with the center being the low point, there's a dip. And let's see if the board, see that? With the board, you can see that. Over here, we've got good, good contact. And then we slowly come up, we create a belly, and then we come back down to good contact. So uh, I want to fix that while I'm at this stage. So The battery died on me. Okay, so project complete. I swear this took like 10 minutes to correct. And again, from this perspective, can't really see it. Let's go over to the other side. Okay, now let's get the zoom in. And... Correction accomplished. This, this looks fine. I'm within, definitely within one eighth of an inch possibly within one thirty second of an inch of exactly the way I want it to be. So uh, all the pavers on the project are good. The There's no dips, valleys, nothing like that I need to worry about. Uh, let me start working on my edging. Alright, so I had to tear this apart to put that in and I've got the strip of grass here. And it's been a couple days so who knows how healthy it is but I'm going to stick it in there right now and see what the best I can get it. I don't think the camera is picking this up so well because of the shading, because of the sun. So, uh, if you can see it, here's your before. And then I'm just going to put that uh, grass back and then there'll be an after. Alright, so basically that's it for now. Okay, here is 
this section just put the grass back just to try to make it look neat okay so that side is all done now I'm going to focus my attention towards the inside grating I have one flag right there because of one wire that I, score, I, I scratched it with a pick when I was digging out for this, this edging right there. So I'm going to start there on that wire location and then I will uh, go from there. Of course, making sure that we have pitch. Let me just pan back. Okay, so we want the pitch to be away from the house. I want the distance approximately that this this portion of the project right there that is called the drip screed or weep screed the soil level should be approximately four inches below that level so um, we just want to have a separation there from the dirt to that so that way we don't get water going back up the stucco that's why code requires you to have a separation so uh, that's it I got a couple of tools right here. I've got a rake and a hoe, and uh, let's get to it. Okay, see the pitch? See that bubble? Nice pitch completely away from the property. You have a nice distance from where the soil is before it reaches the weep screed. Uh, let me get the tape measure. Oh, actually, there's a tape measure right there. Let's figure it out right now. That is a little about a little bit over five inches. So we're completely fine. It's about five and a half inches from this point. Now we'll check the other side and we want to see exactly what is going on over here. Okay, so here's the uh, level. Uh, I gotta go with a slight angle here. Well, this, let me just put it this way. I gotta do it this way so I can see the bubble. Okay. That's level right there. So this is how much distance there is. This is how much slope there is away from the house. The distance here is about five and a half inches. And moving up here, it's about four and a quarter. And over here, it's about five. Might be a little bit of a high spot right there. Either way, we've got good pitch all the way along the house. So I may have just a little bit of a high spot there, I'll just rake that out a little bit. But generally speaking, I've accomplished my goal. I've got the distance I'm looking for, the slopes away from the house, and I uh, can go ahead and put, so I have some landscape fabric, let me show you. Underneath Mr. Duck there is just some plastic. It's not even landscape fabric, it's actually just black plastic. And then inside this wheelbarrow is river rock. That is the top covering that goes over this section of our project. I had removed that when I had to do the stucco job. Please uh, subscribe to my channel so you can see that entire stucco repair start to finish. I took this wall and the wall around the corner down to the bare studs. Our project is looking pretty good. We do have to get some polymetric sand to finish it off. Um, but uh, before we get the poly polymetric sand, I, when I was just blowing this down, I noticed a problem over here. Let me show it to you. We got a pretty good size break in the concrete right there. So I want to get some cement going. I want to do a concrete repair right there before I get the polymetric sand because it's just going to, it's not going to work right. It's too, uh, I want because I want to fill in this entire gap here with the polymetric sand and then once you get there forget it. 
because uh, that's too big of an opening. So I'm going to um, get some cement going and uh, and get that uh, get that cleaned out. I was able to get it really cleaned out really well. Uh, the tools that I used was basically just using this, um, like a, I don't even know what you call this thing, a landscape fork, whatever. Just, just some piece of metal and the blower and I was able to get this nice and nice and nice cleaned out and there's a little bit of cement that I can key onto. Uh, I would prefer type S concrete. I don't have it, but what I do have is I have a bag of mortar. It's an old bag of mortar and hopefully it's still good. I'm going to mix up a small batch and I'm going to just just to patch that in. It's not this is not the, the end of the world even though uh, that it's not the exact proper concrete for the project. It, this is just a small patch. Okay we're going to mix up a little bit of uh, cement here, mortar in this case, and uh, patch that hole. that easy. That's good. All right. See how easy that was? That's taken care of. All right, I got to uh, do a little patch uh, up up over yonder, so I'm going to go take care of that patch right now. While I'm letting that little patch of uh, concrete over there set up, I'm just going to take my garden hose and just rinse things off. Plus what I want to do is I want to wet this here to let this settle down. Okay, that's it for today. We'll just let this settle down and we'll see what see how much it settles and looks like in the morning. All in all, so it's good. We are back the next day. All of the uh, soil is looking good. It's, uh, it's all been matted down because I wet it last night and the, the hardness and the uh, slope is all perfect. So we're totally good. This is plastic that came up from the job at the beginning uh, of this project that was down here originally. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down and then hold that in place with these, <clears throat> which are, which are uh, fabric garden staples, they call them. Okay, this here is what they look like. I got a package here of, oh, 25 of these. I got 25 of these for like $4. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start putting this fabric, uh, it's not even fabric, it's actually just plastic, black plastic. I'm just going to start putting this black plastic in just as a weed barrier and also for further drainage to drain the water away and I'm going to put that in right now. I want to point out what I'm doing here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my putty knife and just tucking in that about two inches of fabric 
right where that uh, paver edge is just to tuck in that plastic on that side so just uh, going over that little detail this portion of the project is done all the plastic is down it's stapled in there really nice so we don't have to worry about water shedding weed growth none of that we are completely taken care of from the house to the um, walkway now I'm just going to get my river rock that's on the uh, side of the house I've got some over right just sitting over there on the ground and I got some in a wheelbarrow I'm going to bring that over and just start laying it out so I can get this thing uh, done okay now you see the project with the downspout put in place and we've got the downspout turning with an elbow away from the house and then sitting on top of one of those drainage pads also weighted down with some river rocks and then that's going towards the corner right there um, and then and then you've just got your river rocks and then everything's just kind of washed down this project is um, 98 percent complete the last thing that we need to do now is put the polymetric sand in the joints to lock in all the paver stones so um, that will be the next segment of this video but all in all I um, I think the project is looking good um, so far I'm happy with the results I think it's going to look fine it's not going to look much different with the uh, polymetric sand in place it's, but it is going to lock it in and to and to prevent weed growth from growing up between the stones that always bothers me so what I was doing was I was rinsing this area off to get ready for the polymetric sand and I saw the water ponding in this section over here so I went and evaluated everything and what I did uh, I made a mistake I put too much slope in this section right here see if that bubble shows up right there so what I did wrong was is I sloped off this section here too low and I'll be honest with you I think I actually brought everything here a little bit too low I think both planes should have been a little bit more elevated I was so focused on shedding the water away I didn't take into account this uh, slab over here and the elevation of this slab compared to that slab or the the local um, earth grass right here that that this is going to have to drain into so I actually have a little bit of a low pocket right here that the grass has anyways um, but I'm, I'm not going to go crazy here but this is what I am going to do because I do want to correct this uh, as best I can reasonably I'm going to take up these stones right here, move them out of the way, plus the uh, the paver matting. I've got a couple of bags of 50-pound uh, bags of uh, sand, all-purpose sand, and I am just simply going to um, put some sand underneath here, and then I've got some screeding products here, some screed boards. I've got a 2x4, and I've got a trowel, and a margin trowel, and I'm just going to re-screed this, so instead of that bubble, being the, uh, that this the the next time you see this photo this video instead of looking at it uh, that kind of a uh, pitch it's going to be still sloped away from the property because I don't want to change this elevation over here at all but I do want to bring this up I want to bring the right hand section here up but still maintain a, a slope but just not that pronounced of a slope okay this is after everything has been reset um, I'm not sure how much difference you can see in the camera, but I took this entire section off and I brought the this row up and in this bottom section I probably raised it almost an inch and a half. And then as I got closer towards the, uh, the existing cement walkway over there, it was less. I tapered it off. But I still have slope going this way, this way, and, and a slight slope not as pronounced going that way um, I think it came out real good I mean everything is super straight we we are ready for the next phase of this project which is the polymetric sand so I'm gonna get my leaf blower and I'm going to uh, blow this out right now by the way I should mention I have done uh, extra work here if this is your project at your own house or something of this nature 
make sure that you string everything off and figure out your elevations and triple check it before you commit to the project because I did the project and then I had to redo certain sections because I was at the wrong elevation so elevation is extremely important on this type of a project so so when you do your project at home just make sure that you're checking that that your 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 elevations you're doing your string lines you're checking with your level and you've got the correct slope of course you're, you're always trying to maintain water shedding away from the property but also you need to take into consideration other things I was too focused on just shedding the water away from the property and not looking at the elevation of the earth and of this existing patio and I was too low that's why I had to redo it don't so learn from my mistake so that you don't have to do the extra work that I did. One suggestion that I might have is that what you can do on your project is you can take a paver stone, put it at the elevation that you want, propping it up or digging down to get it to exactly where you want, and then see with a string line how that competes with, with uh, existing structures such as walkways, or uh, the house uh, and all of these different things so you can see how things are going to land. Before I bring out the uh, polymetric sand I'm just going to show you the level and give you a zoom in on the bubble. So you can see that I have a bubble but it's not a very very strong bubble but it's enough to slope the water off. So you can see that I'm shedding the water off that way. Now, when you come over here and just go, this is uh, about halfway in the middle of this whole thing right here. Just check that bubble. So I'm always constantly checking to see how things look. I always like to know exactly where I stand. Um, now let me show you over here. We'll start from the walkway right there where we tie into the gate and there is your bubble right there you know a bubble not huge but you know and then let's come over here right about here there it is same thing and then coming over here to the very end checking that and you can see same thing so we're shedding water completely out that way now let's check this way where you're going now across the uh, the walkway now that one there is just about level so let's come over here and see what that one looks like oops sorry so you can see the bubble there it's uh, slightly pitched so anyways, all I'm doing is just, you know, always checking, always checking to see where, I, where, my, where I'm at. So basically that's the, process, the procedure that I'm using. I'm just making sure that I'm shedding. I'm still shedding out that way, shedding out this way, and I'm slightly pitched uh, that way. And even if I was perfectly level this way, as long as I'm shedding down this way, that's good. But I, I actually like to be pitched both, both directions. Um, and Anyways, that's it. And if you're looking at the elevations all around, you can see I'm, I'm shedding water pretty good. I'm not going to have an issue. All right, let's get that polymetric sand. Here's everything for the job. So we're going to start off with lock them up polymetric jointing sand. I got the color gray. I had to special order that bag on Amazon. Can't, could not get it at the Home Depot. That bag was like $60 delivered to my house. So for tools, I have a push, br push broom over here. I have a regular hand broom, a five-in-one, a rubber mallet, some gloves, a utility knife, and a mask because I'm thinking this is kind of going to be dusty. And I've never worked with polymetric sand before. I'm just going to start here and see how it goes.
Okay, I want to give you a zoom in on what it's like, what I think it's the easiest way. It's actually easier instead of using the broom because the hardest part is the edges. This, the, this part here is easy and you can, you can use the broom for this part, that's not a problem. But on the edges, what I'm doing is I'm, it's easier to me to use my hand with, with my finger to, to fill that in without it going over rather than the broom. And because mine is just a small walkway, it's actually easier for me to just move it with my hands and to uh, fill in the, uh, the uh, perimeter with my gloved hands. This is just easier to maneuver the sand without putting a bunch of excess sand over the edge. So just to conserve the sand. So right like that is pretty much I'm going to sweep everything down again, um, but right now I'm just doing the, the initial fill-in and this uh, procedure seems to work pretty good. Just basically with my hands and if I want to use the broom, just use the broom. But it's easy enough just to use my hands because it's a small area. And the broom is more difficult when you're trying to do the sides. It's actually easier just like this. All the sand is completely down right now. What I'm going to do uh, for the next step is to give it a light blowing with, the, uh, with my uh, leaf blower. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Everything is looking good. The last thing that we need to do is just uh, give it a very light coating of water, misted so that you don't uh, spray it out of the joints but wetted so that you wet down the surface so we're going to do that right now Okay, all we have to do now is let it dry, but this is going to be the final product that you see right here. All in all, a lot of work, I got to admit. Oh, by the way, I should mention, when I was doing the sand, um, I thought that the best profile on the, on the edge right there, where the paver edge meets the stone, was slightly recessed. Uh, in retrospect, I think I was, I was wrong about that. I think a better approach would have been to actually raise it up a little bit because when I had to do the sand, it kept going, it kept going over. So eh, that, was, that was my inexperience not ever working with polymetric sand before. See how I got that slightly recessed? Well, that made it more difficult. So on the profile edges like right over here where the plastic was slightly raised up over that made it easier to fit the sand in and keep it in tight so just keep that in mind I, I just thought that this profile looked better but 
from the sand po point of view, it was more work and more difficult. But uh, hopefully I'll get many good years of life and service out of this project. Okay, that is going to conclude this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you're going to tackle a project like this, I hope I gave you some tips. I obviously made some mistakes, so hopefully you will learn from those mistakes and you, uh, if you're going to do this project, you won't make them. I, after doing the math and thinking about this project, don't feel like I'm going to be doing a lot of paver projects in my future, uh, paver stone projects, because the material cost for this project was oh, four hundred dollars. So let's just say uh, I could have done the same job in concrete, and uh, I think it actually, from for me personally, it would have been an easier install, and I. Uh, it would be uh, something that was a little bit more significant that, that, that there's no movement once the cement cures. So I think uh, for the price that you pay to go full tilt, now mind you, um, in the beginning of this project when you showed me to take up the old paver stones, all I did was buy the, the paver stones and put them in dirt. And then you saw the end result. The end result is that they walk, weeds grow in and out, and that's why I wanted to go through this completely full system that they are that the that manufacturers want you to install with the edging with with the uh, in this case I used that uh, paver base uh, Brock paver base but even if you didn't use the Brock paver base the only thing that that saves you is that you don't have to put in four inches of aggregate underneath the uh, the, uh, the the paver stone the sand and then the paver stones so um, Anyways, uh, the, the job had a lot of layers to it. There was a, a lot of areas. One thing that I personally need to work on is probably my string lines and elevations because I had to redo some work because of uh, not having good uh, proper elevations. But uh, that's it. Uh, please click on like if you haven't done so already, if you like the video, and uh, subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. I will catch you on the flip side.